Hi, I'm George Cox, Production Coordinator for Acton TV, and I'm very excited to be the special guest host of Business Matters for the Middlesex West Chamber of Commerce. My in-studio guest today is Becca Citella of Create Sewing Studio. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. How did you uh, start a sewing studio nine years ago? Um, <clears throat> well, I... It, it, it's, it's a little bit of a complicated question because um, at the point at which my son was ready to go off to school, I was ready to start a new business. And uh, I ended up going to Simmons School of Management and I got an MBA there. Um, and I specifically went into their entrepreneurship program. So I developed a plan. It was actually Create Craft Studio, but I, wanted, I graduated in uh, 2008 into a recession and it was not a great time to open a big retail uh, store and studio. Um, so I took one tiny piece of it, which was sewing. And I knew that I could do that out of my home to start with, um, and that I wouldn't need teachers, I wouldn't need a whole lot of stuff. So I started with that, and it just became so popular so fast that I just stuck with sewing. And the thing is, it's a very creative thing. There's so mm -hmm. many things you can do with sewing. Um, what is your background, your educational and your work background? Um, well. I went to school at Tufts and the Museum School, so I have a, a, a um, BA in art history and, and a studio degree. Um, and I also was, uh, I had a, a business um, where I did freelance graphic design for people. Um, but I just, I got really tired of that. I did it for a long time. I got very tired of it. So sewing, is, sewing was always a part of what I did, but I did everything from uh, silk painting. At, at one point, I was installing stained glass windows in downtown Boston, so I still have um, installations in Boston. Um, but it's, it's just very heavy work, and it, it just, you know, at a certain point, I was looking for something else. And I like running my own business. Um, when I worked as a graphic designer, I also did that as my own business. Um, it's just there are a lot of pieces that are very interesting. So Becky, you sound like a Renaissance woman. You're very creative, <laughs> and you're using your creativity yeah. um, to you know make a business, which yeah. I think is wonderful. Thank you. And how many teachers do you have un working under you right um, now? I have twelve part-time sewing instructors, so it's a very busy place. So it's a really busy place, yep. and um, who well, part, part, part of the reason I have so many sewing instructors is. A, people want to work part-time so that nobody really wants full-time work. And also, because of the way the classes are structured, um, we have multi-levels in each class. So when you have four or five projects going on all in the same class, there's no way one teacher can do it. We have uh, between, say, six and 12 kids, mostly children, take our classes. Um, we might have six beginners, uh, four kids doing a level two project, three, three kids doing a level three, and one person doing a level eight. And we're, we, I have to juggle my teachers and make sure that I have somebody who can handle all of those different levels. So in a typical summer class, we'll have 12 kids and four teachers plus me. So it's very, very busy. There's a lot of action. I going think that's on. awesome. And you have uh, what are the age ranges of some of the, the well, groups the, the, that you the have? Well, the age range that we um, that we advertise is age six to eighteen, and we have we actually get a lot of six year olds, believe it or not, and some of them are quite good. Um, the really kind of the the most of the kids fall in the range of say um, from eight to 11, sort of the, the elementary school age. So yeah. what types of things do they? Um, well, we, we have a, a 12 plus level curriculum. So, and the adults, it's set up somewhat, somewhat differently um, for the adult classes. But for the kids, they come in on level one, and they make a variety of projects that are beginner level projects. And then once they've signed up for one session, every, sub, every session they sign up for after that, they move up a level. So the kids get very excited about this, and they'll say to me in a session, what do I get to make next time? You know, and it's like, okay, well, what level are you? Yeah, you get to make the dress next time, or you get to make a romper, or you get to make shorts, or whatever. So they, they know, once they've done it once, they know that they're going to get to do more stuff. So you take people at different levels of experience, like, you Within know, one class. Some might be yeah. intermediate, and you'll, you'll know when they come well, in. Well, everybody, everybody comes in as a beginner. It, as I said, the adults are a sep separate, but 
with the kids even if they've taken a sewing class before i have them come in as a beginner because when they go through our our um, curriculum i know what they can do and there are a lot of um, a lot of kids have taken sewing lessons where all they do is they'll make a stuffy you know and what we primarily do is garment construction which is you know there there are definitely different levels of expertise like i wouldn't teach darts and a zipper to somebody who had never sewn before. Mm -hmm. You know, you start off with something simple and you work your way up. And what are some of the things the adults work on? I know for me, I, I, I would always love to learn how to sew and I'm mm -hmm. very intimidated about threading the machine, uh -huh. um, you know, ruining a pair of pants because I always need, I'm a short guy, so I always, <laughs> I always need to have my, yeah. have my pants on. Yeah. And, um, you know, what type of things are adults looking for? That type of thing? I mean, well, how to do a zipper? Well, some are. We, we actually had a gentleman uh, about six months ago. All he wanted to do was learn how to hem. And he came in for a private sewing session just to do that. And he hemmed all his pants, and now he knows how to do it, and he's moved on. For, our, for most people, they, you know, they'll, like for the adults, we have, um, I think, four beginner projects. There's... Uh, lounge pants for garments. We have a zippered pillow project for home deck. We have a, um, let me see, a, oh God, I'm losing it. Uh, oh, an infinity scarf and a clutch. Those go together. What was the fourth one? I'm trying to remember. But a lot of, a lot of the adults, at least um, in our group class, sign up over and over and over again. And once they've gone through the beginner project, there is no adult curriculum. They'll say, I want to make a dog coat out of spandex. Can I do it? And it's like, if they've been with me for a year, yeah, we'll do it. You know, just get the pattern and the spandex and we'll do it. And you offer um, group classes, but yep. you also have private instruction yes, for we um, do. children and adults. Exactly. We have um, private, private instruction for kids. We have parent-child lessons. We have adult, um, adult private lessons and semi-private. Sometimes um, two kids will want to take lessons together. So. What do you what do you say to people or see people when they're intimidated when they're when they're trying to sew something and they get frustrated because I, I mean people who have never done this before right I mean what would you like to say to people well, who want to try this because I think it's a great skill to learn I really do the, the reality is if you have um, a good sewing machine that's not hard to use and you have a calm patient instructor who knows what they're doing you just take it step by step. You know, we start off, we teach people how to wind a bobbin, how to thread up the machine. And, you know, that kind of stuff, when you own a machine, there's a manual that comes with it. It's a thread path, you know. So we show, and, and we, act, we ha are completely set up. So we have um, machines already set up in the sewing studio. You don't have to bring a machine. We have everything. The, the only thing that, that students buy is fabric. And if you run out of time and you're dropping your kid off and you didn't have a chance to go to the fabric store, we even keep a limited supply of fabric. For 20 bucks, you buy a piece of fabric and you're on the road and your kid starts sewing. So, you know, it's really, it's, it, teaching someone how to use a machine is not hard. What's really challenging is explaining and teaching tech, different techniques and helping people navigate through the instructions because Forty years ago, the instructions on patterns were very good. They aren't good anymore. Hmm. So they've just they've got they just they just aren't good. You know, there are um, there's a pattern company. I taught my husband to sew because right after I started uh, the sewing studio, he begged me to teach him because he had specific things he wanted to make. Right. Yeah. Because you know you need it for all kinds of applications. Right. In life, yeah. Right. Well, he had something <laughs> something specific he wanted to make, and then he, he, I mean he got so good he ended up making dress shirts that he wore to work, and he'd say, "I sew this," and people say, "No, no, that's, that's wonderful. That's Brooks Brothers. There's no way, you know." And he'd make <laughs> it hard for himself, like plaids and stripes and matching everything up. And plus, you know it's going to fit exactly the way you like, exactly. which is important. Exactly. But, I mean, that, that's a challenging project. A dress shirt is it's, it's up there. Um, but the reality is learning how to run a machine is not difficult. What's challenging is, as I said, understanding what the different techniques are, like how to make a dart, how to make, a, how to make pleats, how to do zipper insertions. And also, un when you see a pattern, understanding what they want you to do. I have a whole library of probably 100 books on different you know different sewing techniques because the patterns don't give you that instruction so you know it, it's I don't know what to say it, it's it, it's it's a, a really interesting 
uh, discipline because it's, it's a combination of being creative but within the confines of technique and patterns and having things fit, you know, so it, it, I don't know, I, I, I love it. Well, I think it's great because what makes it special is you're, you're creating something that you can use later and exactly. it, it gives it a little bit um, more meaning to you yeah. and, and your family. Instead of buying yeah. something off the rack, you have well, something yeah, that you created. Exactly. And you know, the, the reality is with, with clothing today, um, the quality is really very poor. Mm -hmm. You have to spend a lot of money to even get, you know, uh, any kind of quality. And when our students make something, not only is it well made, um, but it's unique. They chose the fabric. Even if they're using a pattern within our curriculum, they make it their own. And nobody else has yeah. that particular outfit in that, you know, and they, they just it get makes, so excited about it. It's it so makes fun. It, it makes it unique and special. Right. Now, I wanted to talk yeah. about the sewing machines because yeah. I know you must have seen, I know my um, my aunt used to be an unbelievable sewer. Yeah. We The whole family would just go to my Aunt Anna's house right. and have her sew. She had one of the ones with the pedals. Oh, we have one you of know? those. Yeah. At home, at home we have one. But I'm yeah. sure, like, technology always evolves. I'm sure yep. sewing machines have evolved. Yep. I mean, what have you... Have they, have they changed a lot since you've been doing this? And what, what well, type of there, machines? Well, there are different types of machines. Okay. So you can start with the most basic, inexpensive machine, and then you can go up to super high-end embroidery machines. Um, you can spend $100, you can spend $25,000. And the machines that we use are, what, what's important for us in our machines is that they're solid um, and that they're safe. A lot of the very inexpensive machines, the kind that you could just buy online for a hundred bucks, don't have an interior frame. Mm -hmm. And when you have a machine, you have a needle, you have a motor, you have things going on, you put any kind of heavier fabric in that when, when all that's inside is styrofoam, if it torques, you're in trouble. Right, because you have a needle going one way. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a whole that's right? a whole class in itself. I think right. just the right. threading the machine and just proper safety. Well, techniques. what I'm talking about is the structure of the machine. Mm -hmm. All of our machines have a steel interior frame, so it's not the most imp the most expensive machine on the market, but it's safe. Um, it's also not the cheapest machine. And the other thing that we discovered is this machine has speed control, so we can teach the youngest child on this machine because it goes clip clip, clip, clip. A lot of machines, the only way that you can control the speed is with the foot pedal. So we're about, you know, a, a good machine that's safe and will also do what you want to do. It, you know. So I think it's excellent. And I think if anyone at home, if they want to learn more about what you do, give them your website. Oh, it's uh, www.createso.com. Createso.com. Visit her website. And, um, you know, this has been a very fast, like 15 <laughs> minutes. And I think I would like to come down to your studio and learn how to oh, hem my pants. Well, you, well I, and there I'm you go. Completely you serious. To. I think there it's a great go. skill. Yeah. Um, I think it's a really creative, great thing that you do for well, um, thank you. The children and adults. Thank and thank you. you for being the guest on Business oh, Matters. Well, thank you very much. You're my welcome. My pleasure. We'll be back with our next guest. Do your part. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank today. Welcome back to Business Matters. I am here with Dr. Gert Walter, uh, an Emerson emergency doctor, and we're going to talk about his company, uh, Medical Aesthetics of New England. Um, how are you? Welcome to the show. Welcome Thank back. Thank you very much, George. How are you? Good. Um, so what are you known for? What are some of the procedures that you're known for? At the, uh, we've been in the spa now for about 11 years, a little bit over 11 years, and we have a second office out in the Lemonster Fitchburg line. Uh, we're one of the biggest Botox and filler providers in New England, and we, we must do over 20 different procedures. We do some newer ones like PRP and, and bioidentical hormones. We do some more traditional ones like Botox and fillers, and then I do some surgery in the office also. And what, what type of clients do you have? Do you have men and women, mostly women? I know... Um, um, majority women, but mm -hmm. we have, we're getting more men. I think men are accepting the, the, the different Botox and filler procedures more often. You know, we were talking earlier, I've been doing it for seven years, so I find this, you know, very fascinating. So, um, what, is, what is your specialty? Like, would you say your specialty is it, is it everything you just listed is... You mean at the... At, at, yeah. I'm actually an emergency physician, so that 
medical uh, saving <laughs> people's specialty. lives is your uh, is your specialty. <laughs> so this, which this is my other my other specialty here. Um, I think it's just it's making people happy and giving them what they want in a safe way, in a professional way, and also the I think the office is very relaxing. People come in there and they just it's really we try to have it be sort of a spa like setting rather than a physician's office. And you're a, um, a doctor. What made you decide to get into um, having a spa to help I, I people I believe my younger. partner. Uh, <laughs> my partner, Stephanie Liasa, she's a nurse, and, and we're 50-50 partners in the business. And she was an emergency nurse, and she started getting into this and needed a medical director. And then I started looking into it, and eventually we came up to, you know, we came together and um, supported by our spouses and, and started this. We It's been over 12 years and we started looking into it, but officially opened a little bit over 11 years. Now, you're a doctor, so mm -hmm. of course you had extensive training for the emergency department. What mm -hmm. kind of training did you have to go through, uh, you know, educate yourself about just fillers and, you know, injection yeah. sites and... Yeah, when I went through my residency, it was, I won't say how many decades ago it was, but Botox and fillers were, they, they just weren't around, they didn't exist then. So, mm -hmm. and I think other physicians that, you know, are my age also have had to learn um, their specialty training for it. And we try to keep up, we, several times a year we go try to stay up with the newest. And um, the Botox company, Allergan, is very good about, uh, for certain select providers to, to give us sort of, the, they're called master's courses and, and just go and get kind of the fine nuances and how, um, just how facial aesthetics has changed over the last 10 years. Uh, when we first started, the, the classic was sort of, if you see a line, you fill it in, and then it's become much more realizing that why those lines are created. It's not from smiling too much, but it's really from loss of, of tissue in the middle of the face, whether it's fat and bone and muscle, and then sort of recreating that. Um, and just giving people a much more natural look than even 10 years ago, even five years ago. And, so. and a natural look is important because I'm sure you've seen in your practice, people come in and they've had a bad procedure, maybe they-, they Or look on TV. Right, they I mean, saw, they, I mean, Nicole Kidman. Yeah. You know, she's a little bit overdone. I mean, what would you advise people if they want, you know, well, too think, much or too yeah, little? I think or, New England's a little bit conservative compared to some, you know, California and some of the other parts of the country. Um, and, and I think that's where our aesthetic is, is, is that people typically, they often say that they want to, um, they want to look better, but not have people, not have it be obvious. Um, and sometimes if you have a facelift, it can, you know, completely changes how you look. And I think with the Botox and fillers, it's more subtle um, and, and just kind of give them a look of what they look like five or 10 years before. I mean, we can really completely change people, but that's not typically what people are looking for. Now, what advice would you give people who are, who are contemplating, you know, plastic surgery yeah. versus fillers and Botox? Um, we, there is some plastic surgery, you know, we don't, I'm not a plastic surgeon, so I don't do the surgery mm -hmm. in the office or in the hospital. Um, and there are plastic surgeons who do fillers and Botox too. So I think it's just talk to as many people as you can and that, and, I think that the job of the physician or the nurse or the practitioner um, is to try to, if people would, um, you know, people would come in and they, they would say what they're looking for and then our job is to sort of say, well, maybe that's too much or maybe have you thought of this or let's do it the way you, the way you said. Some people come in and they want their forehead taken care of, they want their nose, they want their lips taken care of and we may see something different. There are some doctors who will say, oh, you need to have your breasts lifted and your face done and, and this and that. Uh, we're much more about talking to the patient and, and um, really kind of trying to figure out what they're looking for and help them along that path. Because I think it's really important to be honest with people. Mm -hmm. If you're just trying to sell them something they don't need, um, you know, yeah. it's better It's better for the patient, it's better for the person, you know, how they look in the end. Yeah, I, I agree. So, um, so there is a bioidentical hormones. What is that? I've never heard of that. So bioidentical hormones are basically hormones you already have in your body. And as we get older, women hit menopause, their estrogen goes down to almost nothing. Men, testosterone goes down more gradually. Mm -hmm. Women, testosterone. Um, we look at progesterone, we look at thyroid hormones. And bioidentical hormones, if you looked at the molecule, it's what you have in your body and just maybe not enough of. So we try to optimize the hormones. Um, that's different than the synthetic hormones, the, the Premarins and the Prempros and, and the, the, the bodybuilders. I know nothing use. about hormones, so this is very, you know, I know someone who's transgender who's on hormones, but yeah. that's for a different yeah, we reason. Don't, transgender is really kind of a specialty because it's not mm -hmm. just the hormones. There's, all, you know, there's surgery involved and, and sometimes um, social issues also. And, and so it's really a little bit more specialized than what we do. But what we do is, is men who have low testosterone, 
anybody who has low thyroid, women who have either before menopause or having symptoms, because sometimes the symptoms start 5, 10, 15 years before, but it's really kind of replacing what you had before. And, mm. and it's, it's really a very rapidly growing part of our business. And I think it's because people just, they get so transformed. They feel like they did before. And it's, it's I mean, all the time people are saying, this is just life changing. You know, why do you have to have lousy sleep and, and the low libido and it hurts and, and you just don't have the energy and the brain fog? I mean, that's, you didn't have that 10 years ago and we can, you know, we can replace that. And I think as we get older too, it's all about maintenance. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with a little maintenance. And I think what you do is maintenance, yeah. maintenance for yourself. Yeah. You do maintenance yeah. Again, on your car. To, we're not turning, trying to turn people into Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right? <laughs> we're just, we're, it's, it's just getting back what you had before. And uh, we're, we're part of BioT. BioT is the largest hormone provider in the country. And there's about 2,000 different practitioners, nurses, and, and physicians that do this uh, with over 20,000 treatments a month. So it's huge. It's just we're the, the closest one to us is in Hartford, and then there's only three in New England. And in mm -hmm. Dallas, there are maybe 20 of them. So it's just really slow coming up to New England. We're trying to change that. And then would you would someone get a blood test prior with their yep. physician and see if they have low T or yep. where their hormones are? And yeah, then... we do blood testing and symptoms, too. Because mm -hmm. sometimes the tests don't quite match up to the symptoms. The blood tests are kind of a guide. So we check it before and after. We don't check it every time you come in, you know, blood test you to death. And we're not vampires. So if everybody's stable, we may check it again every 6 or 12 months or something. And what does this, uh, how long is the treatment? Is Like how many weeks does? it take to do if I was to if I like say if I had the treatment takes 10 minutes 10 minutes yeah. and that's it's just one time and done or do you come back no for men it's about every five to six months so it's okay. twice a year women mm. it's three or four times a year oh that's wonderful yeah. tell us about your staff and um, you know the people who are trained working under you how many how many employees do you have so we have uh, well my partner's a nurse we have another nurse and then we have two uh, we have a secretary Jasmine's um, she's a business manager there's many things you can do if you don't want to get Botox or fillers you can mm -hmm. come in and uh, my, I'm sure you do microdermabrasion microdermabrasion and things like chemical that. peels yep and so what are, what are some of the benefits for that because a lot of people have sun damage I don't know if anyone know you should always wear sunscreen the first thing you should do when you get out of the shower is put sunscreen on your face I mean, I'm, I'm in my 50s. I've been putting sunscreen on my face since I was 25. And I tell everybody that is like the slow fountain of youth. It is. I recommend that. But and unfortunately, most of us did baby oil and some people did the, you know, the We all did the baby yeah. oil and iodine back in the 80s. I mean, yeah. we didn't know any better, but now we do. Um, the sun causes extensive damage. What type of things can you do to help alleviate some of the, um, the sun sunspots? And some of it's natural aging and, you know, cigarette smoking and, and air pollution. I mean, mm -hmm. There's a lot of different things. Some is genetics. Um, microdermabrasion, chemical peels, they can help with, with uh, it's, it's really more gentle treatment. And then we have some lasers that, that go deeper and can help with the wrinkles and the brown spots and then the veins and um, just sort of the unevenness of the color of the skin and texture of the skin. Now you mentioned another um, PRP procedure yeah. that you do. PRP um, is something that we have been doing for a couple of years now. Um, PRP stands for platelet rich plasma and essentially what we do is we draw your blood. There's a special way we process it to really concentrate the platelets and, um, and then inject it back into you. So number one, you can't get allergic to it because you're it's your blood. You know, you're not gonna, you're not getting into somebody, something from somebody else. Um, and the analogy I use is if you cut your skin and do nothing to it, you're gonna bleed. And then the bleeding is gonna slow down and stop. And then it's gonna get a scab over it. And then the scab falls off and you got a pink scar and then the pink scar heals. Platelets are a very important part of all that entire healing process. It stops the bleeding and then it, it, they actually have growth factors. You have growth factors in your platelets. It draws in, in uh, the, the, your own stem cells into that area to, to help with the healing. Because if you cut yourself, you're cutting blood vessels. This gets a blood vessel to regenerate and grow again. Mm -hmm. It gets the collagen to rebuild. Um, and we can, we use it in a lot of different places. We do something called an O-shot and a P-shot. We're actually taking your PRP and injecting it either into the penis or into the vaginal area to help with libido and help with, with sensation. Um, that's, um, that's one procedure we do. We, we can inject into joints. It's actually been done for about 20 years by the orthopedic doctors. Um, and then we, we, a lot of times, will do it on the face and, um, and then, you know, putting on the skin and putting it underneath the skin. Or sometimes we'll inject it, like for hair, we'll, we'll, we can So you get, you get several, several benefits from this yeah. procedure. Mm -hmm. Now, you also talked, we talked earlier, um, you do liposuction. Now, p before it used to be, you know, there's different methods of liposuction. Sure. I think I think that has evolved too. I think in yeah. the last 20 years, it was when they first started doing it. It's much different now. 
So how, yeah, how, how do you do it? So traditional liposuction is just basically numbing people up or putting them under general anesthesia and going in and doing suction. And sometimes can produce very nice, res you know, very nice results if mm -hmm. the hands are skilled. Um, what I do is I add also an ultrasound and a laser, and the ultrasound helps to melt the fat, so it's a bit more of a gentle procedure, and the laser helps to tighten up the collagen again from underneath to get some extra contraction of the skin. Um, just because sometimes if you take a lot of fat out, then people have saggy skin afterwards. This won't take care of some if they've had bariatric surgery and lost several hundred pounds. But if it's, um, you know, if it's just somebody who's trying to get a little bit from here or there, then, then that is really a nice procedure. And you can look on our website and see the before and after. Now, the fat cells that are extracted, um, if you do gain weight, what happens? Do they go back in that place? I mean, people are. I've yeah, heard if, stories where it may be may be distributed at another place in yeah, your no, body. Yeah, no, it's actually kind of a, a... That's a myth. That's a myth, yeah. Mm -hmm. The fat cells that are taken out that are destroyed are gone. So if somebody gains 50 pounds, what's going to happen is they're going to gain less in the area that the belly or thighs or whatever. They're going to gain less fat there because they have fewer fat cells or they're going to have less size change. Um, but their breasts may get bigger and other areas may get bigger because that hasn't been touched and so they're going to put the weight on there. Yeah, so it doesn't, the fat doesn't like move around and go to a different place. No, it's excellent. I, I, like I said, I, I'm going to say to people home, if, you, if you're interested in this stuff, maybe you're you know, maybe intimidated, what would you like to say to someone who's never had anything done, who's thinking about, you know, maybe I could use, look, who doesn't want to look 10 years younger? What would you like to say to those people? Well, we don't charge for consults, so come in and talk to us. So a free um, consultation, that is yeah. excellent. You excellent. can talk to, you know, talk to the physician, me, you can talk to the nurse, you can talk to the, to the laser techs. Um, the, the other thing is, is we use numbing medicine. Um, we, we have lots of different ways. We use ice. We have different ways of, of um, trying to make it more comfortable for people because, you know, sometimes shots do hurt. Not all the time. There's some techniques we do that make the shots not hurt so much, but it depends on what the procedure <laughs> is. So with a numbing cream, that we have a machine that blows cold air in people. We have, um, we have, we sometimes will put numbing injections in depending on, on what the procedure is. So all of that to try to make it as comfortable for people as possible. Excellent. Well, we only have like 30 seconds left. If people want more information and they want a full list of services, where can they find that? Um, you can go on our website. Our medical, the, the business name is Medical Aesthetics of New England and the website is, is www.medicalaesthetics, A-E-S-T-H-E. We'll put the logo, you know, the, the name down there, uh, ne for New England com, And that has all the before and afters. It has testimonials, it t how to contact us, how to, you can set up a consultation right up online. Um, and of course, you can call us. And the phone number is 978-263-1406. I had the chance to stop by Medical Aesthetics of New England to see Dr. Walter for a facial evaluation and how Botox could help alleviate some of my frown lines. Um, tell us what you think that I need. Well, one of the things that when people come in is we do like a full facial evaluation. And a lot of people come in and they've heard on TV about the frown lines and they've heard about you know, the crow's feet. But there's lots of other places we can do Botox. Those are just the most common. So it's really whatever the patient needs. And looking at George here, what is it that bothers you? Well, you know, I've been getting Botox for a while. I used to have really deep lines and mm -hmm. since I've been doing it, they're not as bad. But yeah, when I go okay, like this. Okay, so the forehead here. And these are actually separate muscles. So this is, these are called the 11s on TV. Um, the, the glabella muscle and the corrugators, they, they kind of come in and they do this and they push this down. So that's what causes the wrinkles there and also that one right in here. Right. Totally different muscle for the forehead even though it's on the face. So look surprised and you can see how it lifts up. So this muscle actually goes way around on the outside here. And we can certainly treat those both together. So that's what we'll treat today. So his forehead, his wrinkles, these are the ones that are most odd. Um, prominent there to there, but see the wrinkles out in here? So he's got a strong muscle that pulls up in here, and if this is all relaxed, that's what's going to create the spock look of these, this bit of the muscle in the corner right here pulling up like that, so that's why it's important to treat that too. So he's going to get the ice and the Botox, and we're going to show you the procedure, so stay tuned for that. All right, George, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, I'm going to start first, first good with your forehead. Here. So the other thing that's important is when Botox is taught, very often it's taught very formulaic. So it's six units, four units, three units. And, and when people f don't have a lot of experience, that's what they do. You really want to have somebody who's talking to you all the time, a practice, somebody who's going to do the injection, and watch your face all the time. Because what we're constantly doing is watching what the movements are, what the natural movements are. If, you know, you know, if a woman has bangs down here and she has wrinkles in the forehead, she may not need to have that treated if, if she never sees it. Or if they always wear big glasses, maybe they don't have to have this area treated in here. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very individual. I think that's the important thing for people who do this, who are experienced, 
that you always want to be talking, it, having somebody, you know, that's what we're doing, trying to constantly chat with you and having you move your face to okay. see how the muscles act. Okay. All right? Great. So first thing I'm going to do is, is do across the forehead. Mm -hmm. And you're going to start way out in here and just wrinkle your forehead up again. Okay, good. And you can l relax there. It's kind of hard to keep holding it up like this, so mm -hmm. I'm just putting my fingers there as a marker. Um, the other thing we don't want to do is put the forehead Botox too low down in here because that's going to do this. Mm -hmm. So we'll kind of keep the forehead muscle goes way up in there. And it's a science. <laughs> and an art. And an art. It's an art, yes. And you're, you're an artiste. <laughs> All right, and then over. Uh, okay, here we go. So here comes the first shot. Wow, for you. that was painless. A couple little twitches there, but mm -hmm. um, good. our mirror walked again. It didn't hurt at all. Um, it just felt like a little spider bite or whatever. Um, here it is. <clears throat> this is all going to settle in in about a week to two or, yeah, can't even tell. Yeah, no bleeding, no bump. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we make ours pretty concentrated and that's why it's... You don't you don't walk out with looking like you've been attacked by mosquitoes. Yeah, no, it's so, but even if you did, it would go away in twenty minutes or something. So like I that. should see results within a week. You're, you're thinking you may start seeing in one to three days. You may start okay. seeing some change in there, and then in a week will be um, most of the change. But two weeks should be the full change. And if you want to, um, just a consultation. Maybe you're curious about getting some work done. I mean, we all want to look our best. Come down and talk to Doctor Gert Walter. Business Matters will be right back with our next guest, the managers of the Acton Cowork and Conference Center. Dappled sunlight through trees and a wisteria-covered front porch. No two days are alike. An older woman sorts her medication. So every day, you prepare. A woman who is blind feeds her service dog. For yourself? She places the bowl on the floor and he eats. For those you love? A mother using a wheelchair packs a lunchbox. Her daughter takes it, kisses her, and runs off. For whatever the day may bring. A man who is deaf signs to a loved one and departs. Being prepared is a part of who you are. But in the case of a disaster, preparation isn't always front of mind. In an emergency when help and resources may not be available for days, being prepared is more important than ever. It's up to everyone to be informed about what types of emergencies might occur where you live or visit. Knowing the best responses for your personal circumstances is the key to maintaining your health, safety, and independence. Make a plan that covers where you'll go in an emergency and how a personal support network can assist you. Build a kit that contains the specific things you need to survive for several days food and water, medication and supplies. The older woman assembles her kit. As well as any important documents you may need. She includes a USB drive. Being prepared is a part of who you are and disaster preparation is no different. The man who is deaf stores his kit in the closet. There's no one more capable of planning for your situation than you. The mother using a wheelchair closes her kit and hugs her daughter. Words on screen. Be informed, make a plan, build a kit, get involved. Ready.gov slash my plan. Welcome back to Business Matters, where we showcase different businesses for the Middlesex West Chamber of Commerce. Our in-studio guests are Kate Gilbert and Joe Badenoff of the Acton Cowork and Conference Center. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I was there for the ribbon cutting, and it's just a great space. Can you give people an overview of what, what you do? Well, Acton Cowork and Conference Center is, although the name states it, co-working is a concept where if you have a business or you need to work, but you have no need to own an office 24-7 all the time, Coworking is the opportunity to be in a collaborative space where you pay for the time that you need to work in an office setting. Um, as well as the conference center component, we have a 1800 square foot conference center with full technology, as well as a training room and a meeting room. So any size room that you need for a group, we pretty much have available for use. Excellent, and Kate, tell us the concept of coworking. Sure. Co-working, in short, is collaboration. 
um, coming together, different business owners who may do different things, all share an office space, share the resources, and share time at the water cooler, time in the lounge. Um, there's a lot of collaboration that goes on in co-working spaces, and it's a way to have an office space when you need it and only when you need it. We have conference rooms of three different sizes. What you see here is our large conference room. The tables are modular, so you can have it in one large table or in rows for a training or test-taking setup. We also have a quiet room. This room will not be booked out. It will be available to people using the space on a first-come, first-serve basis for phone calls, private conversations, or any other privacy needs. The space features seven private offices, each with locking doors, full picture windows, and curtains for privacy. We have a member lounge for eating lunch, hanging out, and this is where we also hope to host our member networking events. And lastly, our small conference room is in here. This room is available by the hour, the half day, or the full day. We have special rates for nonprofits, special rates for early morning, evening, and weekend meetings. We wanted to cover any need that a potential business owner is going to have that, you know, from a collaborative environment to just space to work. And what types of groups will, will use your space? I know I want to talk to you at the, um, the opening. You, you were saying you're going to uh, work with nonprofits, which I think is great. Yes. So um, nonprofits, boards of nonprofits who need to get together once a month or every other week to talk about programming um, can use our conference rooms to do so. We also have people who want to host trainings, um, host meetings and seminars, and bring a group of people together around a table to have a discussion on an as-needed basis. Our large conference room is perfect for um, training sessions. The table's modular, so it can be set up in rows. And we have an AV cart that has a camera on it that can be used to record focus groups or um, perform video conference calls on a professional format. You know, and I remember I was talking to Elijah Martin Merrill of uh, Not Your Problem Tech Services, yes. and he was showing a great demonstration where you could just bring your iPhone and just do your whole PowerPoint presentation wirelessly, which I think technology is really important to people. People want it to be easy. Yes. And I think you made it easy for people. We really strive to have the technology, to do some technological things in the space that were forward thinking and to make it easy. Um, when we started to put together the idea, when we talked technology, of course we brought Eli in to consult, but we set it out right from the start, we'll have the fastest internet in town, and then everything we built out from there. Um, uh, our presentation cart um, that we've put together, um, the name doesn't do it justice. There is more technology fitted into that 55-inch screen TV than almost any other business has in their own conference room. Mm -hmm. um, it's mobile, it's available for any of our rooms, um, but we wanted to do some smart things with technology um, so it's easy for a business owner um, to use, but it doesn't matter who books our space. If they have a presentation, a video conferencing need, um, even if they just need to find a video to show somebody on the fly, everything is available for use right in one modular piece of technology. And that's what people love. People just want it to be easy. And um, if someone wants to book the space, how do they go about doing that? They can come to our website, actoncc.com, where you'd find all of the pricing for the different spaces and a booking calendar. When you make a booking, we'll receive it as a request and issue you an email that will give you access to our doors through an app on your phone. So when you come to the space, you don't need a key card. You don't need somebody to let you in. You'll have an app that you hold up to the door access system, and the doors will unlock automatically because the system will know that you have a booking to be there at that time. Now, is there going to be someone on staff always there? Or sometimes if somebody, like, say, if I want to you know, work on my project at 3 in the morning, I get inspired, I want to go, can I do that? If you're a member. 
If I'm a member, if yes. If you're a member. If I signed up to be a member. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, the space is not staffed full time. We will be there most of the time. Um, when new members join, they'll come at a time that's convenient for them to go over the membership agreement and terms of service with one of us. Once we've completed that, you can come at whatever hours you book the space. Because I know a lot of people, you know, like to set their own hours when they're working, you know, for themselves. So that's great. And you have a lot of amenities there. You have a kitchen. You get a beautiful outside patio. And I think I saw a grill out there. Yes. To do. So uh, tell us about that. Uh, the, the space itself, uh, we really wanted to make sure that we offered a lot, but the, the building itself offered enough of its amenities. There's a patio right off the conference center, which is ours to utilize. There is a grill outside uh, that belongs to the building and is available if someone had an event that that's what they wanted to do. Uh, we plan to do a members event uh, in this, during the summer where we're going to grill for everybody. Um, inside the space, there's a, there's a, a, a kitchen set up where we're providing, uh, there's Keurig with coffee, um, ready to go, there's a, an array of snacks, a full-size fridge, uh, there's a sink in the space. Uh, you know, there's all, you know, we wanted to make sure that all of those amenities were provided so when you want to come and work and get something done, that's all you need to concentrate on. So if you have that spark of, of creativity at 11 o'clock at night and you go to the space and set up, well, the kitchen needs are there, you know, obviously the bathroom amenities, you know, the, the good internet, the calm space, you know, it's all provided for you. You know, it'd be a great pl uh, place to, you know, writing it. If you, if you want to be alone, it, it, seeing you're open almost 24 hours, yep. if, if you're accepted and you have your iPhone passing, it's great. Yep. What, was, what was in that building before? Uh, so it's a pretty big, I mean, it's a huge space. I don't know if people at home, and we're going to show a little video, but it is a very beautiful open space. I mean, you have, you know, like a living area and stuff, um, but what was there before? So uh, the, the conference center, um, which I've been familiar with for years, um, you know, the, there was a, an educational company that used it year round and they don't need to use it year round. So it went back to the owner. Um, to find a use for. Um, and uh, right around the same time that that happened, there was a software company that was in what is the space the co-work was in. And they're, they're right next to each other. And that software company, uh, honestly, the owner decided to have everyone work from home. So uh, he decided he didn't need an office. There was no reason. Everyone that worked for him coded software. So uh, mm -hmm. both spaces ended up being empty. Um, you know, this goes to the origin of the space. Right. Um, I came across the fact that, uh, you know, co-working in Acton was threatened. The only other space in town had a for sale sign. And, uh, you know, my time uh, in my other profession led me to understand how many consultants, you know, one woman or one man companies exist in the town of Acton and the surrounding towns. These are the people who have to travel to their clients and they have to travel out of town, but they work for themselves. And if they're working from home, they're probably not as productive as they want to be. It's true. And a lot of them end up using their client space to work. But if they're working on client A and then they start work on B, well, they're, they're kind of using other people's spaces for hours that don't apply to them. And they don't really want to do that. Um, so co-working was something that I felt should be saved. Um, and I knew uh, who controlled the space, pitched the idea. Um, and then one of the smartest things I did is I talked to Kate. And uh, she is a veteran of co-working for years in her profession as a web developer. Um, and then she surprised me very happily by saying, well, I'd like to be involved. And I walked out of the room and I did a little happy dance. And uh, we kind of have collaborated since. Um, but uh, we have uh, the people who control the building. Um, they loved the idea. They didn't know how to do it. And we worked hard to show them that this is how we'll do it. And uh, we've put a very welcoming, capable space available for people. And what's it like just being a part of the chamber and just networking your business with other businesses, letting them know, you know, about you? It's been a great launching point. Um, you know, we're launching a brand new business and uh, it's to have access to an organization 
that supports local business, that uh, promotes local business. Um, it's been a great stepping point to get her name out there, to interact with business owners, and to have a different layer of word of mouth spread on it. Um, you know, you can, you can buy just print media or you can send flyers, but word of mouth is what works in this area. So to have access to the chamber and its members to start that word of mouth on a positive way and to get immediate feedback from business owners on what we can and should do um, has been invaluable. And, you know, I have a feeling you're a Rotarian and you just um, helped with the Lions Club treasure hunt. Mm -hmm. And how would you like to get charities involved in what you do? Because it seems like, you know, you're for nonprofits and charities. Yes. Um, we're all about community. And we're hoping to see everybody come together and start working more together. So we are looking forward to hosting more events for area nonprofits like the Rotary, the Lions Club, the Chamber of Commerce, and others, um, and provide an alternate gathering place for their needs. And if people um, want to know more information, where would they find, how would they find you? You're located um, right off, is it Post Office Square, it's called? That was, and I know that because I was on the treasure hunt. And yes. That was, I, we were talking earlier, that was one of the hardest clues, and you guys were gracious enough to host, you know, the treasure hunt that, for the Lions Club. So it's on post office. What is the address? The address is 1 Acton Place in Acton. It's not on Post Office Square. It's at the intersection where Route 27 intersects okay. with Post Office Square. Okay. We're opposite the post office in the office park that sits at that corner. In, in your website? Uh, actonccc.com. Go there, all the information is there, as well as a way to get in contact with us. Um, you know, we're offering uh, a tours right now. We want to show the space to people. Um, you know, and anyone that reach out, reaches out to us and references um, this show, we'll give them a free one day pass. Let them come use the space. Let, let them experience, you know, the, the calmness, but the professional presentation of the space enjoy the internet and see why I am honestly able to say it's the best internet in town um, and just kind of understand that we're providing a, a, a really relaxed but capable space for them to get their work done and to collaborate with other businesses um, you know and I don't think there's anything more powerful when you get two people from two different industries and they start sharing ideas their perspectives are different enough where there's just value being added and that's, that's the true secret of co-working, is that as soon as two different industries start talking to each other, there's best practices and creative concepts that come together that you're not gonna get if you just sublease an office and you never talk to anyone besides the three clients a year you bring there. Well, we'd like to thank you for joining us today at Acton TV Studios. If you want more information, you can visit their website at actonccc.com. I'm George Cox for Business Matters. Thank you for watching. The Middlesex West Chamber of Commerce would like to acknowledge and thank our broadcast sponsors, Emerson Hospital and the Westford Regency Hotels.